Welcome to Celebrity Tastemakers. I'm Lisa Mateo. From the hottest restaurants to local dives, celebrities always know where to eat, and here's your chance to join them. Come along for the ride as our guests share their favorite meal, and the chefs that make them teach you the recipe. That's all part of Celebrity Tastemakers, your reservation to food and fame. concrete jungle where dreams are made of. There's nothing you can't do. Catherine Narducci defined those lyrics and made her dream a reality. From a Bronx tale to The Sopranos, Scorsese to Clint Eastwood, this East Harlem talent has been a big light to inspire you. One hand in the air as we ride with Catherine Narducci, who'll make you feel brand new. She made it here, she made it anywhere, and she made herself a tastemaker. Hi. Hi, Catherine Arducci, how are you? I am great, how are you? Excellent. We are going to Kima. It's going to be an experience. What are you having? Grilled whitefish. Simple, healthy, in for a treat. Let's go. The characters you've created, they're strong, generally a voice of reason. Not too far from the girl from East Harlem. It's true though. You know, on The Sopranos, Charmaine Bucco was the ultimate voice of reason, I think. I feel like that was very hard for me to do in a way because some people liked her because she was the only one that didn't want to be involved with the mob. And then some people, they love James Gandolfini so much. And I was always so hard on him. And that was hard for me because I love James Gandolfini. And even in acting, it was hard for me to be hard. You know, I was always pushing and I did not want to be that person. but. It was so much fun, my God. You're from East Harlem. What life lessons did you learn from 114th Street? How to share, because we were all poor. And that was the quote that this guy said to me a long time ago. Famina brings people together. Hunger brings people together. You share. And I learned that from my mother and her friends and family. Everybody shared. If somebody was broke, you gave pound of spaghetti and a stick of butter to feed them for a night. That's a life lesson. You share, you share what you have. And I learned loyalty. I learned a lot of great lessons from growing up in Harlem. You know, survival skills. The neighborhood, that was the DNA for the godfather of Harlem. Because you lived in the area, did that help in your role as Olympia Giganti? Absolutely, because you know the mannerisms of these people. These are the people that I grew up around. So it definitely comes into play when you're doing something like that. And working on The Godfather of Harlem, the girl who plays my daughter, Lucy Fry, is amazing. Vincent D'Onofrio plays my husband. He plays the chin. I had such a great experience working with him, and I trusted him. I discovered a lot about myself working with him and we got on set, that's where we met, right there, doing the scene, action, and all these great little surprises happened for me. With The Godfather of Harlem, yeah. The Wizard of Lies, yeah. you portray actual people. In The Wizard of Lies, I played Eleanor Squillary, who was Bernie Madoff's secretary of like 30 years. Barry Levinson, the director of Wizard of Lies, he said that he didn't want you to impersonate the characters. No. So how is the process different from when you play a fictional character? Well, you know, some people try to imitate the person. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he means, but if something comes to you organically, there was something about her, she had a very singy-songy kind of voice, and that stayed with me. I wasn't trying to do it, and I watched a lot of videos, and with Olympia Gigante, this is more creating a character that exists and just having my own take on what she would be like. Do you prefer one over the other? I like doing my own thing. Also in The Wizard of Lies, that reunited you with Robert De Niro from your first movie, Bronx yes. Tale. Yes. Robert De Niro, Chaz Palminteri, they had this open casting call. Yeah. And you had little acting experience. You had no headshot. How about I had no acting experience? No, okay, I'm giving you some credit, girl. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <A> exactly. <laughs> they chose you for this role. Now, was acting just as you had imagined. Even more. And I remember on my audition tape, at the end, she said, after we read, I want you to put your sides down, your lines down, look in the camera, and tell me who you are. 
I remember saying, my name is Catherine Narducci and I am supposed to be here. This is where I'm supposed to be here with you now. <laughs> Which brings me to this quote, when it's your time and it's your role, there's nothing to stop you from getting it. Nobody, nobody can stop it. Who said that to you? De Niro. I believe in that. Yeah. I believe anything that is gonna happen to me in the future is just waiting to happen. Do you approach your acting the same way that you approach your artwork? I do. Organically, wildly, and that's what I'm learning more and more as a member of the Actors Studio, which I am so proud of. That place is my church. Stretch your instrument. And it's the same with The Sopranos. The Sopranos was funny. Kathy Moriarty is one of my good friends. Kathy tested for Edie's role. Mm -hmm. Kathy didn't get it. So Kathy called me and she said, there's a new show. It's called The Sopranos. And I said, I don't <laughs> sing. And she's like, no, it's not about that. I actually auditioned for Edie's role. They called me back and I auditioned for Charmaine and I got Charmaine Bucco. Steve Van Sant called it one of the greatest acting schools one can imagine. What did yeah. you learn from the School of the Sopranos? How to work as a team. And James set the tone on how we would all be with each other. And Edie. What's one word you would use to describe the James Gandolfini that you knew? Generous. All the way around. One of a kind. Are there any sayings or lines for, or scenes from the show that come to your mind when you think of The Sopranos? When Uncle Junior says, the FBI is so far up my ass, I can taste brew cream. <laughs> what do you think happened in that final scene of The Sopranos when the episode went to black? I think he lived. I don't think he died. I don't think he was killed. I don't want to think that. David Chase is known in general not to allow the actors to improvise as opposed to Martin Scorsese. So what was life like? I'm glad you said Irishman? his name. I'm glad you didn't say Scorsese. Because his name is Scorsese. Yes. You got it right. <laughs> what was life like on the set of The Irishman? Well, because I have a prior relationship with Bob, I was so comfortable. Bob is very special to me for many reasons. And Joe Pesci was amazing. Amazing. And the two of them together, I felt so blessed. And one day, we all had a scene at the wedding. And I'm looking at all the icons on stage. Al Pacino, De Niro, Bobby Cannavale, Ray Romano, Harvey Keitel, Anna Paquin, Dominic Lamadozzi, Stephen Graham, and the list goes on and on. I just said, this is the last of the true, iconic actors. This is them, they're all here. And I was blessed to be there. It's just a very humbling experience for me. Not only are you in front of the camera, but behind the camera as well. You wrote and directed your own short, Dante's World. Yeah. Now, did you take things you've learned from other writers and directors, or is that a reflection of yourself? I did it the same way I paint and I act. I had an idea, wrote it down, and then it became a little short film. I had this blessed mother, and every night I would look at her, and I started to feel like she was looking back at me, and so I would like start talking to the statue of the blessed mother. That's when I started writing Dante's World. These ideas started coming to me, and I asked my best friend to play the role of Dante. Shot it in my house, and Josh Trank, who directed me in Fonzo, the Tom Hardy movie. Mm -hmm. He also directed Fantastic Four. Chronicle, he was my neighbor and my dear friend, and he edited the short for me. I just wanted to learn what it was like on this side of the camera. Levinson, Chase, Scorsese, and of course your Zen master, Clint Eastwood. Yes. Are any of them as great as your first director, your mom? Oh my God, <laughs> that'll make me cry. <laughs> Did she develop that love for acting for me? Is that where you get it from? Oh my God, like the most out of the box, yeah. creative Italian woman in a very Italian traditional neighborhood. My mother was very different. And so was her sister, my aunt. 
They were Booby and Bunny with their nicknames. Booby and Bunny. My mother sang and wrote poetry, and my aunt danced. Not professional, in the house, but on a professional level. They were that good. And they were sort of like that wasted talent. They never got to pursue it. My mother had a voice that was un believable. She would make me introduce her. We would set up this cabaret and I was a kid. She'd give me the brush. I'd say, ladies and gentlemen, it's Betty Narducci. <laughs> and then she would set up a little fake acting class and we would reenact all our favorite scenes from the old movies. And then I would go upstairs to my aunt and she would have music blasting and pull out these Fred Astaire dance numbers. And my mother, as a poet, she was amazing. From far away as conceivable I have come. Like a breeze in the night, I have passed through your soul. My touch is light, almost non-existent, but I am too real to be ignored. They both had a calling that they were not able to fulfill. For anybody who's watching this show, go for it. Anything you believe in, if you feel it in your heart, do it. What do you like to do when the lights and the cameras are all packed away? paint. What's one of your favorite memories on screen in your past 25 years of acting? Probably sitting in the bedroom of a Bronx tale with Robert De Niro because that was my first movie. He gave me my first break. One of the things he did say to me is, I don't want you to think because you're playing my wife when you leave here it's going to happen for you. Be a big star. You're going to still have to work for it and knock on many doors for somebody to open that door for you. And they gotta get you like I did. I got you. Marty got me. Mm -hmm. That stayed with me forever. You play alongside a lot of dominant characters, including Tom Hardy. Tom and Hardy. Bonzo. Oh, God. He's a gorgeous man, but he is also a gorgeous man on the inside. In this movie, he's playing Al Capone. Mm -hmm. I play his sister, Rosie, and he is one of the most humble, funniest. He's got the best sense of humor. I have videos of us dancing to rap music while they're tweaking the lights in our <laughs> 1940s costumes. And that was an experience. I was in New Orleans. We created our own Mardi Gras. Matt Dillon's in it. Linda Cardellini, who's in Green Book. We stayed in this little house and became a family for a month. Mm -hmm. And everybody became really friendly. But Tom Hardy, woo! <laughs> I'm so excited, I need a drink. And then I need the grilled fish. <laughs> Welcome to Kim, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you, this is Lisa. Hi Lisa, such Hi. a pleasure to meet you. You too. Uh, we're so excited for today. Chef is waiting for you in the kitchen. And Kitty Cat, you and I are gonna have a drink and catch up. I am so excited. Me too. Let the cocktails begin. Let's go do this. <laughs> Greek cuisine is a culinary tradition that dates back some 4,000 years. It's known for its fresh ingredients, especially its fish. And here at Kima, it's flown in daily right from Greece. And executive chef Chris Christophe, he's going to show us how to make Catherine Narducci's favorite dish. Lavraki or bronzino. Light, flaky, it's very subtle in flavor. Lovely with a little bit of oregano, a little bit of uh, lato lemono. Lato lemono is a dressing that we have that we mix with lemon and olive oil uh, emulsified together. So while it's grilling, we'll brush it with that, uh, with a bundle of fresh herbs. The important part is when we serve it, is that we debone it and we finish it off with a little bit more lato lemono, some papers, oregano, and a little bit of rock salt. Catherine was raving about the Greek salad. So my Greek salad is uh, classic. I like to have like at least 80% of my uh, Greek salad to be based on, on tomatoes, uh, preferably in season. A little bit of uh, green peppers, also the cucumbers. Some people take the seeds out of the cucumbers. I'm not a really big fan of doing something like that. I just love the cucumber as it is. The onions, not too much, just to complement like every other second bite. Kalamata olives, we finish it off with a little bit of feta and the dressing is white wine vinegar, a little bit of seasoning, a little salt, a little pepper, and the olive oil. We sprinkle it all on top, and we finish off the salad a little bit like that. Very simple, very, very simple. delicious. I can't wait to see what other surprises you bring out to the table. Thank you. I'm excited to do that. Thank nice you. to meet you. Greek food to me is right up there with Italian. It seems like it's a twist on traditional Greek dishes. It is. The chef is Greek, that's the basis of his menu. He has a lot of French 
in his background mm -hmm. as being a chef. So this is kind of like a Greek menu with a bit of a French twist. A lot of the things that he has I haven't seen in a Greek restaurant before. And this Perfect. is my favorite. These are our kima chips, thinly sliced eggplant and zucchini, lightly fried, and that's our tzatziki sauce that you dip it in. The little bites around <laughs> or little Please. pieces of fried cheese called saganai. Try this. Oh my goodness. Running a restaurant is like producing a movie, creating an orchestra. What do you love most about the business? We love to see the people's expressions when they leave their habe. What brought you here to, to 18th Street? We opened a restaurant in Roslyn, Long Island, mm -hmm. called Kima. Kima means wave? It means wave, like an ocean's wave. And it was funny that we realized that a lot of people from Manhattan were traveling to Long Island to go to our restaurant. And that's a true compliment to us. Sure. And we just felt that we should really just expand. You have a certain nickname, don't you? Because I heard you call her a nickname. Well, look, my phone says uh -huh. it all. Kitty cat? Yeah, I kitty call her cat. kitty cat. I love kitty cat. I love it because cats are playful and they're mm -hmm. funny and they're mischievous and I'm always in trouble. <laughs> and I'm always looking to have fun. And my nickname totally fits me. Kathy Moriarty used to say, Nadoch, <laughs> with her raspy right. voice. Nadoch, which I love too. For someone like me who's never been to Greece, I love the food. Oh, but when amazing. you come here, it makes you feel like you're on the island. That was our intention. Greece is all white and blue, sure. and it's just clean, and that's what we wanted to do here. So we wanted to make that atmosphere and keep the menu clean the way mm -hmm. that Greece is. You know, people go to Greece for the summer, and they'll say, I ate so much, but I lost 10 pounds somehow, because the food is just oh so my clean God. and so healthy. I invite Catherine every year, but I know as an actor, it's very difficult for her to commit. One of these days, we'll get this show to go to Greece. We'll take it on the road. Oh my God, take it Celebrity on the road. Celebrity taste makers is Let's coming to Greece. Take it on the road. Oh, I'm coming to Greece. <laughs> take it on the road. <laughs> now, when you see a lot of food shows, you see judges and critics. You yourself, a judge at the Tribeca Film Festival. Oh my God, Jane Rosendahl. Ah, oh, I love you. She is a woman that I really look up to. She runs the Tribeca Film you. Festival with Bob, Robert De Niro. And it is such an honor for me to even be asked to do something like that. You're perfect for that because what I love about Catherine, like when I ask her what she recommends in a movie is it's not about what stars in it, it's about the authenticity of the film. Mm -hmm. She loves little indie films. She loves things that somebody got a great script and made a movie for $100,000. Mm -hmm. But if it's great acting, Catherine appreciates it. There's these small indie films that are just so incredible. And you know from Dante's World and Bricklayer's Poet. In both of those, there's more emotion than there are in some movies that it's are true. hours long. Well, in Dante's world, the conflict between Dante and his father and his mother comes to play because that message for me was, while you're here and you're alive, express what you're feeling to your loved ones. Mm -hmm. Because people pass away and there's so many regrets. While somebody's still alive and they're there with you, as hard as it may be, Tell them you love them. Tell them how you feel. Don't wait for them to be gone. And that's what Dante's world was really about, is regrets and not being able or afraid to express ourselves and mm -hmm. say what we feel to each other. And Dante's world is one actor. Yeah, and he's It shows an actor that is not a known actor. Every single time I had a screening, every single person said, who is the actor? And they're confirming what I feel already and what I see already. And I have to give props to Diane Warren because Diane had the belief in me. And so she made it possible for me to do this film. And Gina mm -hmm. was great in that. And Gina was so great. Yeah. Now you spoke in the car about this on-camera chemistry. In a restaurant, it's gotta be the same. There has to be this chemistry between oh, yeah. everyone in the restaurant. Absolutely. First and foremost, I think it comes from within. The mm -hmm. chef with the managers, with the wait staff. The busboys, everybody plays an integral part in their restaurant success. And then that has to trickle to the guests. You need to make them feel like they're home and if they're happy. The food is a big part of it, mm -hmm. but the rest is just an experience. You mentioned an experience. On Celebrity Tastemakers, we've had so many great people who sat down for a meal with us, like Dominic Kinesi, Frank Vincent, Frank Pellegrino, and they've all said the same thing. Sitting down for a meal is like a religious experience. Having a meal with somebody is like a true bond. The outside world is gone, all the pressures are gone. Sit down and enjoy your meal. And who's ever with you, it's 
bonding. My mother, I remember, would feed us dinner. Mm -hmm. There was five or six. My father always worked late. And no matter what time he got home, it was 8.30, 9.30, 10 o'clock, she never ate a meal without waiting for him to come home. No. Yeah. To this day, she still does it. And that, she always said, was the most important part of her day. And I try to incorporate that now in my own life. Have you ever bonded over a meal with Hugh Jackman? I bonded over a scene with Hugh Jackman, which was a great experience. I did a movie called Bad Education. It's with Allison Jenny, Ray Romano, and Hugh Jackman. What a gentleman. Hugh Jackman, Tom Hardy? Not bad. Hugh Jackman, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're a long ways away from Roni's Bakery back in East Harlem. But I'm sure this is just as special for you. So thank you. Siniyama. Thank you for joining us on Celebrity Tastemakers, where you always have a reservation for food and fame. For complete recipes and additional clips not seen on this show, log on to CelebrityTastemakers.com. Until we eat again, I'm Lisa Mateo. A lot of us did not know how that ending was going to go. I thought my cable went out. What could be a better ending than you create your own ending? And where would he be today? God only knows. <laughs> Smoking a cigar, looking at the ducks fly away. De Niro and Pesci. Two iconic, last of the Mohegans, best of the best. Scorsese directing us and appreciating it like you wouldn't believe. I mean, all my bills have doodling on them. You know, you're on the phone waiting. All I do is doodle. Create trouble in the street? This is not where I grew up. This is in my adulthood, but I do get in trouble in my adulthood, you too. You do. Oh, yeah. We did it, baby!